comfortably living in uncertain times right now. But as we are all being asked to stay home, to stay on our own patch, there is so much for us to discover right under our very noses. Over the coming weeks, a community of nature and wildlife fanatics are going to be bringing us the stories of nature on their doorsteps. And what better way to kick things off than going on a bug hunt with the one and only Nick Baker. I'm going to go looking for an animal which is probably my bug of the month, really. Well, it actually could be one of two. And they're both black and they're both beetles. So let's have a little walk about and see if I can find one for you. Now, the best place to look is anywhere there's hedges or verges, uh, embankments, particularly where they're a little bit rough and undisturbed, lots of flowers, the sort of places where you might find this plant, cleavers. It's one of the bed straw family and uh, this particular species, also known as sticky willy to some of us, it's got lots of other colloquial names, produces those little sticky balls, those little burrs later on in the year. But this stuff, it's very suckly at this time of year, it's just beginning to creep up from the base of the hedges. This is the favourite food of the insect that we're looking for. Okay, well it hasn't taken me very long. I'm a little bit helped out here because I know my patch quite well. Um, I'm only a little way from my house, so I haven't gone far, and I'm on my hourly walk by the way as well. This is my exercise, so um, I'm very pleased with myself because I set out to find one. It's always nice when you set out to find something and you are able to find it. So here it is. What I've got here, my favourite beetle, is a bloody nosed beetle. So I've got not one, but two. And look, just as I pick them up, they produce a spot, see that spot of liquid on my finger? That there is what gives them their name. Um, it's actually blood, they auto hemorrhage, they basically deposit from glands around their mouth. It's very distasteful, it's very bitter, but um, they're completely harmless beetles. They can't fly, that's why they're quite clumsy, um, but because they are toxic, it means they can amble about in the day and not worry about being eaten by uh, any other insectivorous bird or predator because they are so distasteful. There they are, that's my beetle of the week. I can't wait to see what Nick has in store for us next time, but for now we're going to head to the Cotswolds where Billy Heaney has got his local woods rigged with camera traps to see if he has any new neighbours. Like many, my job and accommodation plans have been somewhat scuppered due to everything that's currently going on. And as a result, I'm in lockdown in Gloucestershire at my girlfriend's family's house. Now, the best part about this are the woods that back right into the garden. Throughout this woodland, badger sets and rabbit warrens litter the landscape. And lucky for me, there's one that borders the field and the woods right behind the house. So last week, I set up a couple of camera traps, both on the wooded part of the set and on the part that borders the field. And I was buzzing when I found out that it was active. Now this is great because I've now got heaps of free time to enjoy watching them. So since then, I've had this entire area rigged and I've been keeping my eye on what they're getting up to. And they've been checking in on me as well. I've already seen a little bit of den maintenance at the wood entrance and just some general hanging around and sniffing by the field entrances. And over the next few weeks, I'm going to be moving my cameras around this area to try and see what else this lot are getting up to. And above all, just enjoy watching them on their own terms. So time for a little bit of badger background. Badgers are members of the mustelid family, which also includes pine martins, otters, and the wolverine. They live in social groups known as a clan, and their range extends from Britain, across Europe, all the way to the Middle East. Now, it's not just the badgers that call this neck of the woods home, I've had roe deer passing through and the foxes have also been extremely active. I absolutely love this time of year. Now, if we're really lucky, the badgers and the foxes would have already given birth to this year's young and they'll be hiding away in their dens underground. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed for lots more animal action in the coming weeks. So join me next time where I'll be digging a little bit deeper into the wild world of badgers and seeing what else my new neighbors are getting up to. What amazing footage Billy's managed to capture already and we're only in week one so fingers crossed for some more badger action in the coming weeks. But now from badgers to birdsong where the lovely Lucy Hodson is going to be helping us learn how to crack the code of how to identify some of our most iconic songsters. Hello, my name's Lucy and I'm going to be introducing you to the world of birdsong. Now I'm sure many of you are familiar with watching birds, identifying them by their size, their shape, their colour 
identifying them by their voice is a whole other level because I like to think of it as being part of like a secret club. You can be sat somewhere with friends and family and hear a bird out in the distance and only you know it's there. You can't see it, but you can hear it. So it's kind of like having a magic power. Now I'm gonna be introducing you to some familiar garden faces and telling you how to identify who that voice belongs to when you hear it. The first bird we're gonna go into is the blackbird. Now this is a really, really familiar garden face. That male is that gorgeous black color that gives it its name. He has that bright gold yellow eye ring and beak to match as well, he's beautiful. And it's the male who does the singing. They tend to pick a high perch, so always keep an eye out looking on a chimney top, perhaps your garden shed roof or a nearby tree. Those would be the types of places he'll sing from. Now when you hear him start to sing, that voice is really, really iconic. It's got a really, really noticeable tone. And what I like to think a blackbird song sounds like is like a man whistling. So in my mind, I imagine my granddad potting around in the garden, perhaps in his shed, just whistling a tuneless whistle. And the blackbird does this little whistle in stops and starts. So he sings for a little bit and then pauses and then sings for a little bit and then pauses. And if you listen to it, you can really, really get that tone. It's deep, it's wistful, a little bit mournful, but it's a really, really nice tone to listen to. So next time you're out and about, if you hear something that sounds like an old bloke whistling, have a look around, cast your eye out for a perch and you might just see who that voice belongs to. With this extra time that a lot of us might have right now, this isn't just a time to observe and to listen, this can also be a time to reflect. And what better way to dive into a world of imagination than with the wonderful Gillian Burke. I'm a wildlife presenter on BBC Spring Watch, also Autumn Watch and Winter Watch. When I'm not doing that, I'm a biologist, I'm a filmmaker, I'm an environmentalist, I'm a mum. And I live in a really beautiful part of the country, right in the southwest of the UK, in Cornwall. And there's so much to explore and to discover here. And normally, especially at this time of year, I would be out and about exploring this incredible place. These gorgeous pockets of Atlantic rainforest, miles and miles of coastline and coast path, and of course, the water itself. But we're all in lockdown. How on earth are you meant to connect with nature and especially enjoy this amazing spring that we're having when you can't leave the confines of your home? And this may come as a bit of a surprise, especially as a wildlife presenter, but I don't actually have a garden. I have this like little tiny space that I very grandly call my courtyard, which is essentially a tiny space with a few pots and plants. And I know a lot of you are gonna be in the same boat. So believe you me, even with just that, I know there is plenty of nature to be discovered. So my challenge was to find some really cool stuff in about five minutes, looking around all the pots around my little courtyard garden. And I slightly worried because I thought maybe today was the day I wasn't going to find anything, but I had such little faith and I should have had more faith because in almost, well, not even five minutes, I found loads of stuff, really cool stuff. Got a little snail here, right in there as well. There's a little millipede in there, which is absolutely gorgeous. This is really common. You'll find these in your compost heap. I mean, I literally found at least one under every single pot here. This is a brown centipede. But this is what I really wanted to show you today. This, the humble earthworm. And I promise you that even something as simple and humble as an earthworm can take you on a journey. All you need is two things, time, and let's face it, we've all got a lot of that on our hands, and imagination. Peppered, of course, with a little bit of information. So why bother with earthworms? I mean, it's not just because we're desperately looking for wildlife in a tiny little courtyard garden. No, it's because earthworms are actually really important. They're known as ecosystem engineers. Ecosystem engineers are species that help create whole ecosystems where a whole host of other organisms can thrive. And in the case of earthworms, that includes us, believe it or not. Because earthworms, all 27 species found in the UK and all over the world as well, are species that help to really build up a healthy soil. Now, biologists don't just think of soil as dirt. It is like gold dust because all of life, as we know it, depends on it. Making the imaginary journey 
to the underground world where earthworms and a whole cast of other organisms create the soil beneath our feet, the soil that all of life depends on, absolutely blows my mind. But what's even more amazing is when you zoom out and out and you start to see the bigger picture where this soil is one of the most precious things on earth. In fact, one of the rarest materials in the whole universe. Being able to find the wonder in the little things, the common things, the things that we often overlook and take for granted is one of the greatest gifts. If you can do that, then you will never run out of things to explore, no matter where you are. As this unique situation has given us the time to stop and observe what's happening around us, it's been amazing to see what some of you have already been sending in to us. But this also might be an opportunity for us to consider how we engage with the natural world and to think that perhaps moving forward we could sometimes pursue our passions a little bit closer to home and delve a little bit deeper into what really does lie just on our doorsteps. But for now, stay safe and stay home and join us next time for some more doorstep discoveries. <laughs>